time can mean the difference between this and this. What I recall, I was sitting here painting, and I just started tingling all over, seeing dull vision. I went standing up and I fell right there. I called out for Lori. I heard him hit, you know, collapse, hit, him, hit the floor. And uh, when I came out here, he was gurgling. When George Dodson collapsed, his wife Lori moved quickly. An ambulance arrived within minutes, and George was at Memorial Hospital ER within a half hour. And I told the uh, rescue people at the time that it did not feel like my heart, that it felt like I was having a stroke. George had already lived through a major heart attack and says he could tell this wasn't one. His emergency patient record showed dizziness, tingling, double vision, and a headache, all signs of a stroke. But his doctor seemed focused on a cardiac cause, giving George an EKG, doing a blood test for a heart attack. The doctor came in and said that, that his heart looked good, that he hadn't had a heart attack. And um, he... <laughs> and he was going to let him go home. <laughs> Lori says she was worried enough that she went to the nurse's station to complain. And I told him that I was concerned because that doctor was going to send him home, and, and he was not right. But according to a negligence lawsuit filed in the case, the hospital did not at any time that night trigger its stroke alert protocol. This emergency assessment is offered at all of the region's primary stroke centers, including Memorial, and it requires that the patient be seen by a neurologist. And in this case, they didn't call the stroke code until 5.30 the next morning. It looks like they literally parked him in the ER and left him there. It would be more than seven hours before he was seen by a neurologist, according to the lawsuit, and he was quickly diagnosed with a massive brainstem stroke. Attorney Matt Sowell says that time could not be recovered. By then, it's too late to give him uh, any treatment that that hospital could provide, so they have to airlift him to Mayo Clinic. For George, the golden hour had passed, and with it, any chance to deliver the clot-busting medicine that could be compared to a stroke antidote. A shot of TPA actually dissolves the blockage and restores blood flow to the brain, but it must be given within four hours of the onset of stroke symptoms. It's obvious. I had obvious signs. The Dodsons have filed a medical malpractice suit against the doctor in the hospital. Both the doctor and the hospital have denied the Dodsons' claims in court filings. Memorial Hospital declined to comment, but issued a statement saying they are sorry for the health challenges Mr. Dodson has experienced. And although they understand that it is a difficult time for him and his family, they will defend themselves through the legal process. The hospital added it is proud of their skilled and compassionate caregivers, as well as their tradition of providing high quality medical care to the Jacksonville community. The Dodsons have not asked for a specific dollar amount and say no money can restore what they have lost. But they hope their case will encourage anyone with stroke symptoms to fight if they feel they aren't getting the proper care. If you don't see an awful lot of activity in the hospital, you need to be really screaming, pitching a fit. If I had it to do over again, I would ask for a nurse's supervisor or the administrator of the hospital because I, I, I didn't have good vibes. George didn't have good vibes. And I, I, I should have, you know, took a stand, and I feel real bad that I didn't. But I didn't know. <laughs>